and welcome to Indus News Live from Islamabad. I'm Hira Mustafa and these are the headlines. U.S. President Joe Biden has set out to undo key policies of his predecessor Donald Trump on his first day in the Oval Office. Biden signed 15 executive orders that included ending the ban on entries from Muslim countries. The orders include Washington's return to the Paris Climate Accord and reversing the process of leaving World Health Organization. They also strengthened the fight against COVID-19 pandemic that has claimed over 400,000 lives in the U.S. alone. China's move to sanctioning of former Trump administration officials unproductive and cynical. President Joe Biden's National Security Council urged Americans from both parties to condemn the action. Earlier, China imposed sanctions on outgoing U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and 27 other top officials for alleged lying and cheating. A complete shutdown is being observed in Indian-occupied Jammu and Kashmir's capital, Srinagar, to mark the 31st anniversary of Gorkadal massacre. The all-parties Hurriyat conference had called for the shutdown, which was supported by all other political and trade organizations. Over 50 people were martyred when Indian troops opened fire on protesters in Gorkadal area of Srinagar on this day in 1990. Turkey says Greek expansion in the Ionian Sea does not affect Ankara's claim over the Aegean Sea. The Turkish foreign ministry says Ankara has vital rights and interests in the semi-enclosed area. Earlier, the Greek parliament approved legislation to extend the country's territorial waters along its western coastline. In Brazil, over 1,300 people have died from COVID-19 and more than 64,000 have tested positive overnight. Pakistan has reported over 2,300 new cases and 54 deaths in the past 24 hours, taking the toll to 11,157. Globally, the virus has claimed over 2,073,000 lives and infected nearly 97 million people. Juventus beat Napoli 2-0 to lift the Italian Super Cup for the ninth time. Cristiano Ronaldo's netted his 760th career goal followed by substitute Alvaro Morata sealing the win for his side. Well, these were the headlines. News in detail coming after the short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now, the news in detail. U.S. President Joe Biden has set out to undo key policies of his predecessor, Donald Trump, on his very first day in the Oval Office. Heading to the White House after the inauguration, Biden tweeted there was no time to waste in tackling crisis. This report has more. Joe Biden kicked off his presidency by signing 15 executive orders, calling them the starting points of a bold and vital policy agenda. The orders include ending the ban on entries from Muslim countries. These also include Washington's return to the Paris Climate Accord and reinstate ties with the World Health Organization. The orders strengthen the fight against COVID-19, which has claimed over 400,000 lives in the U.S. alone. Biden also revoked Trump's emergency declaration, which helped fund the construction of a wall at the U.S.-Mexico border. Mexico has welcomed the move. Meanwhile, Democrats have taken control of the U.S. Senate. 
White's president Kamala Harris swore in three new members to give the party a narrow grip on Congress. Democrats hold a 221 to 211 majority in the House of Representatives. Do you solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that you take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which you are about to enter, so help you God. World leaders have congratulated Joe Biden on becoming the 46th president of the United States. In our tweet, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan said he looks forward to working with the new U.S. administration to bolster bilateral ties. Iran's President Hassan Rouhani expressed hope the Biden administration will return to nuclear deal commitments. Britain's Prime Minister Boris Johnson says he looks forward to working with Biden to strengthen the partnership between the two states. EU Commission President Ursula van der Leyen says the bloc is ready to reconnect with an old and trusted partner. NATO says it hopes to boost transatlantic ties under Biden. While a Kremlin spokesperson said Russia will see good relations with the United States. The U.S. has called China's move to sanctioning of former Trump officials unproductive and cynical. A spokesperson for President Joe Biden's National Security Council urged Americans from both parties to condemn the action. Emily Holmes said imposing these curbs on Inauguration Day is seemingly an attempt to play to partisan divides. Earlier, China imposed sanctions on outgoing U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and 27 other top officials. Beijing accused them of lying and cheating and said Pompeo and the others planned, promoted and executed moves that interfered in its internal affairs. A complete shutdown is being observed in Indian-occupied Jammu and Kashmir's capital, Srinagar, to mark the 31st anniversary of Gokadal massacre. The all-parties Hurriyat conference has called for the shutdown, which was supported by all other political and trade organizations. Over 50 people were martyred when Indian troops opened fire on protesters in Gokadal area of Srinagar on this day in 1990. Meanwhile, India has deployed additional troops on routes to Srinagar and all other district headquarters in the valley. The Pakistan Army has successfully conducted the flight test of Shaheen 3 surface to surface ballistic missile, having a range of 2,750 kilometers. In our tweet, the military's media wing said the test was aimed at revalidating design and tech parameters of the weapon system. Speaking on the occasion, Chairman Joint Chief of Staff Committee General Ali Braza said Pakistan wants peaceful coexistence in the region but will deter any aggression against its sovereignty. President Dr. Arif Alvi and Prime Minister Imran Khan congratulated scientists and engineers over the successful flight test of the ballistic missile. In Pakistan, COVID-19 has claimed 54 more lives overnight. This pushes the death toll to 11,103. The health ministry says 2,363 new cases were detected in the past 24 hours. The number of cases has risen to over 524,000, while over 478,000 have recovered. Currently, there are more than 35,000 active coronavirus infections in the country. Special Assistant to the Prime Minister Dr. Faisal Sultan said the government aims to procure at least 1 million doses of vaccines by March. He said the government ultimately aimed to inoculate 70% of the population against the virus. In Brazil, over 1,300 people have died from COVID-19 and more than 64,000 have tested positive overnight. Globally, the virus has claimed over 2,073,000 lives and infected nearly 97 million people. While mass vaccination campaigns have started in certain countries, the pandemic continues to ravish the world. 
The dead toll in the U.S. has surged past 406,000 with only 24 and a half million cases. China is set to impose strict COVID testing requirements during the Lunar New Year holiday season, when tens of millions of people are expected to travel. The country reported 144 new cases, marking the highest number of daily infections since March 2020. In France, the health ministry has reported over 300 deaths and more nearly 27,000 new confirmed cases. Health officials have expressed alarm after a study showed the UK's third lockdown is failing to curb the spread of the virus. Meanwhile, Dubai's authorities have ordered hospitals to cancel non-essential surgery for the next month after a surge in cases. In Zimbabwe, the government has ordered work from home for civil servants following the deaths of two cabinet ministers. But Australia has called for a special travel bubble with Pacific Island nations after the fourth day of zero infections. Turkey says Greek expansion in the Ionian Sea does not affect Ankara's claim over the Aegean Sea. Talking to the media, Foreign Ministry spokesperson Hami Aksoy said Turkey has vital rights and interests in the semi-enclosed area. He underlined that Turkey's position on the matter remains unchanged. Earlier, the Greek parliament approved legislation to extend the country's territorial waters along its western coastline from 6 to 12 nautical miles. This comes ahead of the resumption of exploratory talks between Athens and Ankara over contested maritime claims in the Aegean Sea. Saudi Arabia, the world's biggest oil exporter, beats Russia to keep its ranking as China's top crude supplier in 2020. Chinese government data shows the country's oil demand remained strong last year despite the COVID-19 crisis. Chinese imports surged 7.3 percent to a record 10.85 million barrels per day. Last year's Saudi shipments to China rose nearly 2% from a year earlier to about 1.69 million barrels per day. Russia stood second with shipments of 1.67 million barrels per day. Pakistan's Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa has visited the South Coast garrison. He was briefed on the situation along the working boundary. According to the military's media wing, the army chief interacted with garrison officers and soldiers. He appreciated their professionalism and devotion to defending the country from multiple threats. General Bajwa also lauded them for their high morale and indomitable spirit. Bilateral ties between Pakistan and Afghanistan have started seeing a positive trajectory in the last few months. The two countries have achieved significant progress on a range of issues, including visa, trade and Afghan refugees. Being neighbors, Pakistan and Afghanistan share historic ties based on their common culture and religion. Their relations have also seen many ups and downs over the last 73 years, given the rest of border stretching 1,510 miles. Now, taking the lead in strengthening the bilateral relations, Pakistan's foreign missions across Afghanistan have started ensuring the implementation of liberal visa, trade and refugees policy for Afghan nationals. A visiting Afghan journalist endorsed and lauded the measures being taken by the Pakistan government for Afghans. Pakistan's embassy in Afghanistan has increased its resources and employees to facilitate the migration process of Afghan nationals. Earlier, Afghan's national visa to Pakistan had only six months duration and it would expire really soon. However, now the visas are granted for one year at least. Moreover, the Thorham crossing point at Pak-Afghan border also got affected previously due to which people shut down their businesses in the vicinity. Anisur Rahman said the Afghan government has failed to maintain real-time data of refugees that were once repatriated to their parent country. This, he said, forced them to return to Pakistan where they are now residing illegally. Currently, three kinds of Afghanis are living in Pakistan. One is the registered citizens. Second is the unregistered citizens, but they have never been to Afghanistan. However, they are not registered with Nadra's database. 
The last type of the people is one who went to Afghanistan but came back due to security and economic conditions there. But the people who have come back also includes criminals, which affects the status of all Afghan refugees in Pakistan. Prime Minister's Special Assistant on Social Protection and Poverty Elevation, Dr. Sania Nishtar, said Pakistan has been an exemplary host for the Afghan nationals. We have decades-long history of accommodating and having an open-door policy to, uh, policies towards refugees. Uh, in recent years, you've seen that many countries of the world uh, have specific policies on where refugees can move, where they can't move, what their entitlements are, whether they can integrate in the economy, what, access, what services they can access. But Pakistan was hugely generous. Parliamentarians from both sides also expressed satisfaction over the recent positive developments and hoped the bilateral cooperation will lead to regional prosperity. Sumaira Khan, Indus News, Islamabad. More news stories coming up after the short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. UN agencies say 43 migrants have droned off the coast of Libya in a shipwreck Iraq in the central Mediterranean. In a joint statement, the UN agency said the incident occurred after their boat capsized in rough seas. They said 10 survivors were rescued and brought to shore by the Libyan coast of security in Zohwara. The agency said the survivors were mainly from Ivory Coast, Nigeria, Ghana and the Gambia. Separately, three people were killed and four others wounded in an explosion at a naval academy in western Libya. In Spain, three people have been killed and 11 others injured in an explosion by a suspected gas leak in central Madrid. Emergency officials said the blast destroyed the top five floors of a building. The building was a complex that provided residential training for priests. The injured have been transferred to a hospital while rescue work is underway. Mount Everest, the world's tallest mountain, is at risk of turning into a dumping site. So Nepalese authorities have taken matters in their, into their hands to turn the trash into a treasure. Details in the following report. Used oxygen bottles, torn tents, ropes, broken ladders, cans and plastic wrappers discarded by climbers and trekkers litter Mount Everest and the surrounding areas. Trash is handled by a local environmental group, the Sagar Matha Pollution Control Committee. But the task in a remote region that has no roads is a huge challenge. Garbage is dumped or burned in open pits, causing air and water pollution as well as contamination of the soil. Number of tourists also and only. Around 50 to 60,000 tourists come annually. To support these tourists, there are guides and porters as well. The waste of all these people gets accumulated here. So waste management is a challenge. Trash collected from the 8,848 meter tall peak is said to be transformed into art and displayed in a nearby gallery. This is a unique idea to collect garbage and display it in a museum. This will further increase tourism. At the same time, this will also lead to waste management and will encourage the young generation to visit the area. Sherpa said under a Carry Me Back initiative, each returning tourist and guide will be requested to take a bag containing one kilogram of garbage back to Lukla Airport, from where the trash will be airlifted to Kathmandu. In 2019, an estimated 80,000 trekkers, climbers and guides visited the area. Now moving on to Jordan, a family has added a different touch to the traditional sweet dish kanafe by grilling it and serving it on skewer as opposed to baking it. More about the sweet dish variant in this report. Kanafe is a traditional Jordanian dessert and is made of long, hair-like strands and shaped like a pie, which is then stuffed with any number of fillings and baked in an oven before being covered with sweet syrup. A family of six sisters and their brother-in-law 
inspired by the Turkish idea, has decided to implement grilling of the sweet dish by serving it to customers outside their house in Amman. The unfamiliar change to one of Jordan's most sought-after dishes has sparked mixed feelings from residents. Kenefe, known as Nablus Kenefe, is usually served on a plate. But we came up with this idea as a sort of change. We definitely do not want to stray away from our traditions and customs, but we came up with this originally Turkish idea as a change. There are people who accepted it while others opposed it, saying how could we change such a traditional dessert. But we think it is something really beautiful. For some Jordanian customers, the variant of kanafe is delicious, whereas some people want to remain with the traditional way of baking. It's very delicious and it is beautiful that it's prepared on the streets. As you can eat it warm while standing in this cold weather, it is very delicious. We prepare it, the kanafe outdoors, and as you can see here, the outdoor space overlooks the West Bank and it is frequented by many people including West Amman residents. They like to eat kanafa on the grill and to drink some hot or cold with it. The sweet dessert remains one of the most enjoyed across the Middle East, becoming increasingly popular during special celebrations. As countries around the world fight to contain the spread of the novel coronavirus, a gaming equipment making company has come up with a unique solution to help curb the virus transmission. More in this report. A face mask with an amplifier and a microphone that helps its owner sound clearer is a unique idea from gaming equipment maker Razer. The mask features two removable smart pods that the company says filters out at least 95% of airborne particles. The waterproof mask is reusable and features medical grade respirators. The filters are actually just located over here. So you can see that this, these are the filters and they're magnetic. So all I need to do is just pop them back, back in and they get done. The same over here, I just pull this out and then you can see that the, the filters exist over here and then I can just put them back in and they, and they just pop back. The mask can be recharged and disinfected with ultraviolet light in a storage case that comes with the package. The clear surface is designed to reveal facial expressions, which is helped by interior lights in darker conditions. So what I'll do is I'll turn on low light technology and when I wear my mask during low lights, you can actually see how well my mask gets illuminated. The mask developed under Razor's project Hazel is still a prototype and not yet available for sale. Now moving on to the business stories, shares in the Asia-Pacific have risen after stocks on Wall Street sailed to record highs following U.S. President Joe Biden's inauguration. The Shanghai Composite in mainland China has gained over 1 percent, while the Shenzhen component has advanced nearly 2 percent. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index has also edged up fractionally. In Japan, the Nikkei 2 to 5 has added close to a percent and the Topix Index over half a percent. South Korea's Kospi advanced more than 1 percent. Shares in Australia also edged higher with the ASX 200 up almost 1 percent. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at Indus.news.